Hello and welcome. In this video, we will discuss about how to implement and set up periodic boundaries using the ANSYS Fluent Meshing watertight workflow. We will also explore the effect of the different options available for the setup periodic boundaries task on the mesh. So let's get started. Open a new session of Fluent Meshing and start a new watertight geometry workflow. In the Import Geometry task, locate the exercise file asymmetric periodic body.sg doc and load it. In the local size input panel, select Yes and define a curvature sizing control. Select the three pipes in the label list. and set the curvature normal angle to 12 degrees. Keep the other settings as default and press the Add Local Sizing button. The next step is to generate the surface mesh. Set a maximum size of 15 mm and a minimum size of 5 mm. Keep the other settings as default and click on Generate the surface mesh. As you can see, for this model, on the periodic size the mesh is refined in the regions close to the pipes. This causes the mesh to be different on the two sides, making it asymmetric. Now, go to the task panel and right-click on the current task. Go to Insert new task and select set up periodic boundaries to add the new task. Let's explore the input panel. The type menu lets you select between the two types of periodicities, rotational and translational. In this case, we will use the rotational one, since the model is 1 sixth of a cylindrical geometry. Under method, we have two options, automatic pick both sides, that lets you select the two periodic boundaries and automatically detects the angle and axis of rotation or the translation vector. Manual pick reference side instead requires specifying the inputs for rotation or translation relative to the selected boundary. Note that only manual method and label selection are available if the setup periodic boundaries task is executed before the generate the surface mesh task. Let's use the automatic method and select the labels side 1 and side 2. Note that only one couple of periodic boundaries can be set for a model using this workflow. In this case, we grouped all the periodic phases on each side under a common label. The last input of the task is Remesh Asymmetric Mesh Boundaries. That gives us three options. Auto, that will let the software choose whether to remesh the boundaries or not. Yes, that will enforce the remeshing. No, that will avoid any remeshing. Note that for the manual method, the Auto option is not available. In this case, let's skip the auto option and complete the task. The green asterisk on the task tells us that in the console panel there is a warning message. Different meshes were identified on the two sides and remeshing was performed. This was our goal. And the message tells us that we are on the right path. Indeed, the mesh is now the same on the two sides and the mesh on the adjacent boundaries has been updated too. The remeshing can also be useful on symmetric cases where the mesh side on the boundaries differ due to the effect of applied local sizings. 
If we would have selected the option No instead, we would have obtained this result. The mesh on one of the sides gets copied on the opposite boundary, and local refinements on the original mesh are ignored. When using this option, make sure that no highly skewed cells get created on the adjacent boundaries. The next task is to describe the geometry. In this case, select the second option, choose yes to change the fluid fluid boundary types from wall to internal, and press describe geometry. In the update boundaries task, you can see that the two sides used for the periodic boundaries are set as periodic and shadow. Upon import of the mesh in Fluent Solver, the two sides will be merged into a single periodic boundary condition. When using translational periodicity on inlet-outlet boundaries, it is better to avoid labels that trigger an automatic boundary condition settings at this stage, so that the periodic and shadow setting do not get overridden. At this point, we can move directly to the Generate the Volume Mesh task. Select to fill with PolyX Core Mesh, then set a minimal cell length to 2 mm and press the Generate the Volume Mesh button. All the previous tasks will be automatically updated. As you can see, even after converting to polyhedral type, the mesh mapping is preserved on the two periodic boundaries. Let's summarize. In this video, we learned how to implement and use the setup periodic boundaries task in the fluent meshing watertight workflow, while analyzing each item in the input panel. We explore the effect of the remesh asymmetric mesh boundaries option on the mesh using an asymmetric periodic geometry. We also understood the convenience of grouping all the phases on each periodic boundary under the same label, since only one pair of periodic boundaries is supported in this workflow. With that, we have come to the end of our video.